Alrighty, Arcane Season 2, Episode 3, the final episode of the first act. Now look, it's already Wednesday for me, right? So these episodes have been out for a while at this point. I've heard things. Nothing specific. No spoilers. I just know this episode is meant to be a little bit of a banger, which I already assumed as much. Episode 3 of Season 1, the end of that first act. That really blew Arcane wide open. We've had all the tone setting and the world building over the first two episodes. I really enjoyed last episode. All this attention to Jinx and Savika and Victor especially. I really enjoyed the directions that they're heading in with the show this season. So I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to go in and see what this episode's all about. And if you guys are interested, there will be full uncut watch along versions of all of my arcane season 2 reactions available on my patreon as well as early access to the other shows that i'm doing and with all that being said enjoy the video all right episode three finally got the name right now the only person i can think about to do with that is jinx and vi but we'll see i'm welcome to some surprises we'll see what happens let's do it bro i'm nervous bro <laughs> okay okay i likes this too industry and the fish has led to the air becoming increasingly toxic. They yeah. call it the grave. Oh, okay. Here we go. System. This is what they've been using. The oh. Oh, shit. I, this is what it is. So is she using this not for the purpose that it was designed for? Hold on, this is going kind of hard. Bro, I love when they do this kind of thing. Oh, yeah. That's a good shot, man. Yeah, look at this. They call it the gray. The gray. Oh, oh, it's like that. So I have to go back and look at all that properly after the episode. But it seemed like that was Caitlin's mother voicing that over, saying the people of the Undercity deserve to breathe. They had a ventilation system set up for them, or perhaps that's something they've already done. And now Caitlin's taking advantage of that to bring, you know, th this gas down to help them with the strike team. Interesting, at least that's what I took away from that. But I enjoy those kinds of openings. Your speeches, ma'am. Was. Ah, okay. From last episode, I think this guy. Sorry, sorry. It's the, it's the gray. It gives me that. Tell us how you wound up here. Hey, wait, wait, wait. But Caitlin is not messing around. She's got a real fire lit under her ass. She's planted something big right here in the pipeworks. She was headed towards the old tunnels. Something about rerouting the vents. Hmm. This is it then. Cuff him. I, I told you everything I know. You're a confessed criminal. You'll spend your retirement in a cell. She's different, man. She is different. Can I get a minute? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mmm, I'm here for it. Your first request for an audience was uninteresting. The second inappropriate for someone of your station. So tell me, Amara. Amara? What does a member of Piltover's Merchant Guild want from me? I've come here to settle a debt. Looks familiar. What you've stolen is more precious than any gold. Hey, yo. Black Rose. My son is dead. Is that not enough to sate your bloodlust? Is this the person? Your intelligence, Ambassador. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We know what you're chasing in Piltover. We will not allow it. The Hextech? Your visit only confirms my suspicions. They've already got it. Insolent witch! My death means nothing. You should have given up the feud. You have no inkling what family is to me. Mm. I might have to do some research, man. I know the Black Rose is related to League Law, but I really like this. Solo isn't ready. Perhaps it's time we involve Mel. No. We must distance ourselves. She's safer as our enemy. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm so interested. I think we should cut the others loose. I can't let her get away again. 
Are you sure your right. old sister is gone? There's only Jinx now. Ah, uh, there it is. It has to end. I'm so sorry about your mother. Everyone in my life has changed. Promise me you won't change. Oh. Or they actually did it, man. I won't. Oh, it's heavy, man. <laughs> I'm proud of them, man. I'm proud of them. Shimmer tattoos. Interesting. Uh, that's one of the council members. Is it Vestayan? You realize how easy it was for me to track you down here? Well, I do own the place. <laughs> Maybe I'd have better uses for my time than sitting around waiting for an update on Princess Kiriman's underground escapades. Princess Kiriman. It's not the girl. It's the name. Mm. Bewitches people. Kiriman. Bewitch. I think Mel could have succeeded with me. Never speak ill of my family. Rally every house and family with even a modicum of influence. Can you manage that? Wait, for certain? Yes, of course, whatever you need. There is another matter concerning your guild merchant, Amara. Hmm, what's going on here? Is that Jalvin? <laughs> kind of looks like Jalvin. Yes. This is a play. Same for Stian. Good to see you again, Lest. Ah. Keeping an eye on a counselor with peculiar tastes doesn't rattle me. But I see, I one. see. You met my mother? Lots of behind the scenes stuff going on here. It's funny because they're actually behind the scenes of a play right now. Hmm? I'm expendable? No, no one is expendable. That's what this is all about. I'd love to promise your safety, but I can't make any assurances other than this. If my mother gets what she wants, the whole city will suffer. They're setting up some big announcement. All the who's who, aiming to take over and put Sallow in the hot seat, but... Okay. We know who's really pulling the strings. And Bessa. I caught a name, Amara. I don't know what you make of that. Ah. It's made with shimmer. Leaves traces on the body. That should be all you need to shut Sallow down. Yeah, true. Dangerous as she is, your mother was spooked. Could smell it. That's why she's here, to deal with this, the Black Rose. The Salo, uh, using Shimmer, obviously, is a big deal. It did not go unnoticed for me. Victor hypothesized that there may be something he called wild runes. Patterns that would occur naturally when the border between our world and the arcane is thin. Okay. Pass me a tome. So I used words you understood in order to elicit your action. This is what Hextech runes are. Pass me a tome. <laughs> Pass me a tome. There, you sighed. Something raw, natural. That's wild runes. Most places the arcane is dormant, but here and there, it's more active, and wild runes are sort of. Is that like maybe where Victor's going? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. That pattern is on my tree because you pissed the arcane off with all your demands? That's that's not what I <laughs> Oh, the lad may be on to something. Ooh. Every action sparks a reaction. Newton's laws. <laughs> Do you think this could actually be a result of overuse of Hextech? I'd always presumed it was due to mankind's turbulent relationship with power. But perhaps it is a property of the arcane itself. Yeah. If there's some reaction taking place, how come we've never seen any sign of it until now? And why would it appear on a tree deep under ground? Now, I'm not catching it, but clearly there's something there. You can feel the little build up. Something's gonna go down. There's a rat's nest of misinformation surrounding your brother's passing. Whomever he crossed knows how to cover their tracks. It seems they've managed to strip your mother of most of her holdings. Hmm. She's desperate. Yeah. Which makes her all the more dangerous. Summon the apothecary. I'll want his opinion of this. And check in on Amara. Uh-oh. Is this still part of the hex gates? We must be at least 200 feet below the surface. Ooh. Oh, okay. 
Oh, good transition. Okay, things are starting to make a bit of sense now. Bro, Jinx is busy, busy with this graffiti. I remember some of this from the uh, from the trailer. I see a mural in the back. Ah, Vian Powder, Vanda. Kate, if you see an opening, take a shot. shot. Oh, it's too early for this. Yeah, she's ready, man. Oh, dude, the uh, oh, but, uh, these transitions. Oh yeah, I remember this from the trailer too. These are the same utility ducts that carry our water and facilitate our ventilation, and that would explain it affecting the tree. Inconceivable. That's wild. Uh oh. Something's going on. What the? Is this to do with Victor, perhaps? Jinx! Finally got the name right. And there it is. Guess there really isn't a crack in the earth where you won't find me. What's gonna happen? Is this thing gonna blow up? The old Jan of bedtime stories. Bandit the what? To tell us. Some wispy wind women was to their rescue. Jana! We use the gray to clear the streets, to keep people safe. Never thought my sister would turn blue belly. <laughs> Never thought mine would orphan kids. <sighs> Done it to myself enough. Damn. So someone else would do your dirty work? This kid. I'm done blaming myself for your mistakes. Done pretending you're my sister. You're not. Is she you right? Killed her. Jinx is not. Then stop me. Cause no matter what I do, I just can't seem to die. Take the shot! And she's not going to. <laughs> Smoke and mirrors, man. Is this what we're doing? But now they know where Caitlyn is. I think that was the. Yep. Okay. That was the whole plan here. Hope you got a chance to, you know, before. <laughs> I'm ready. Me too. Ooh. <laughs> Strap in. Hmm. Where are we? I have no idea what that is. You walk along the edge of danger. Savika. Wait, this is cooking. I've got chills. <laughs> oh, that's hard. Hey, yo. Dude, these transitions. Oh, it's happening here. Oh, it's happening to all the hex tech. Oh, it's fit. Oh, but <sighs> Jesus Christ, man. Oh shit! Oh my goodness! I got nothing. I got nothing. Oh, this kid's gonna get involved. Jesus! Oh, that's so sick. What have we done? Oh, okay.
Dude, some of these shots, man. Oh, a finger. Hey. Music's gone. It's serious time. I'm ready. Echo couldn't do it either. I'm glad it's you. Now it's too early for this. Be you. Oh no. no. Oh, this is a terrible situation. This jinx gonna want Vi to die, you know? It's the other side. Well played, Caitlin. Shoot the gun, not the person. Why don't I think of that? What are you? Get off me! This kid has just shaken up the entire plot. Kate, move! Scram, kid! Kate, she's a child! Move! She's not getting away again! Move! Kate! Oh, this is not good. Oh, no, no, this isn't how it's supposed to be. Oh, that's a big line. Oh, I'm gonna revisit that. I think I understand. But, um, what the shit is this? Is this going up to the Undercity? Uh, to Piltover? Oh, no. <laughs> Oh shit. Oh, I remember this from the trailer too, man. All the colors. Hmm. It's almost like she knew. Undercity kids. Okay, but what does this mean though? What does this mean? Kate. I'm a bit nervous about this now. You stopped me. I had the shot. That was a kid. What have you missed? I wasn't going to miss. <sighs> What's wrong with you? I keep telling myself that you're different. But you're not. It's her blood in your veins. Then why are oh. you the one acting like her? Ooh. <sighs> I'm so mad at Riot for this. I'm with Vi. But you can understand why Kate is the way she is right now. But dude, it's like they give us the Kate and Vi stuff we all wanted and then they do this. Like, I'm so mad. We've got six more episodes, you know. We'll get to where we need to be with it. But um, what about Jace and Echo and Donga? And what does all this stuff mean? Like, is it just paint? <sighs> Alora. Wrong. She possessed? Yeah, here we go, here we go, here we go. Black Rose, but what does this mean? Is Mel gone? Hold on a minute, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. They're really doing stuff though, man. And it's stuff that I like. Good evening. Yeah, look Yesterday, at her. I met with your guild merchant, Amara. We spoke of rebuilding, restoring this great city to its former glory. <laughs> when two Zornite assassins fell upon us. It's very clever from Ambassador, though. Half your council is dead. Well, no mm. more. Wrath must be met with wrath. Appoint a general to lead until this threat is vanquished. Someone who will not pale when faced with Zorn's degeneracy, whose conviction never wavers. A pillar of your community, whose house has always stood for progress. It might be Kate. Of course. I could only be referring to... Caitlin Ehrman. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I could see it coming, man. Ambessa is doing stuff. 
It's just where Caitlyn's character is right now. It makes sense. Vengeance oh. for your son. Yeah, she's... Yeah, okay. She's behind the scenes with it. Did she pay them to attack the funeral just so Ambassador could come in? Oh, she's making it look the way she wants it. Come, child. She's pulling all the strings, man. Bro, Caitlyn is going to have a character arc this season. It's the name, man. The Kiruman name. <laughs> Your mother will have justice. I swear it. Is this what she wants to hear? Dude, look at Kate though. Oh shit. <gasps> hey, I didn't know it was gonna be like this. Is that it? Show me Jace. I hear it, man. I hear it. They're still teasing it. And he's looking more and more like singed, man. Yep. Yeah, that looks familiar. Is it his blood? Singed blood? Damn. Uh, Oriana. I'd love to see Oriana, man. I don't know if we do, but that would be really cool. Oh, shit! Dude, no Jace, Ahima, or Echo. Okay, okay. Dude, they really cooked this episode. There is some... Dude, I'm going to have a big discussion about this. There, there's really a lot going on. This Black Rose stuff, this Arcane stuff. Th th there's Void going on too, I'm sure of it. Lots of extra League stuff as well. Oh, just the character stuff like Jinx and Vi, Caitlyn. Like during that big scene, the big fight, like Jinx and Vi, Caitlyn, Savika. I was genuinely thinking, is this the best Arcane episode? yet this episode has just added an incredible amount of layers to arcane oh dude it's so i love how they do it like in three different acts man like now you have to wait a little bit dude okay here we go Alrighty. so once again we'll start at the beginning and we'll just go the whole way through and there will be some points where i have to do some research because i only know some things by name but it's just stuff i i am really interested in and i would look up if i was watching this by myself so here we go okay so upon revisiting this my understanding is that and look i could be wrong about this and please feel free to correct me that the Gray is the toxic air that just exists underground. Is that what they're saying? So the Kiramans have devised a ventilation system for the people of the underground to breathe. I'm wondering if we saw something like that, that that Silco was showing, maybe the Ken Barons in season one could be wrong. But what Caitlin has gotten from this is all the plans and like this map of the ventilation system. And that's what they're using to traverse the underground. And they're bringing with them the gray, which is, you know, the, the toxic gas. And that's helping them, I believe Vice says something like, uh, flush the people out. So they're trying to make it so no one's getting caught up in this, which is why this kid uh, being in the middle of all this is really interesting. But that was my interpretation of that. A really cool scene, you know, some really cool visuals. I really love when they open up episodes like this. And then instantly they're just reinforcing where Caitlyn's at. Super blunt, super to the point. She is just so driven by her desire to get Jinx, to get revenge for her mother. This is what I was saying during the episode. You can understand why Caitlyn is feeling the way that she is. And she's in a position of power with a powerful name. And she is using all of those resources, you know, to try and get what she wants. This is what she thinks she wants right now. And it might be what everyone wants to get rid of Jinx, but it's got to be for the right reasons. And, and that's what I think Vi is pushing her to try and understand. And I'll talk about that more as we get into the episode here. The Black Rose. So this Amara person, a very familiar face. You might have seen her in season one. She was the guild merchant. Seemed like she was just a vessel with the way that she was talking. She said her death is meaningless. Now, the only thing I know about the Black Rose is that it's a Vladimir voice line from League of Legends. It's also a new trait in Teamfight Tactics, the League of Legends auto chess game that I am a massive fan of. So I only know of the Black Rose's existence. Now, when I think of the Black Rose, obviously I'm thinking Vladimir, but I'm also thinking characters like Evelyn, like LeBlanc. I've heard whispers during a trailer breakdown of this season that LeBlanc is very heavily involved in a lot of behind the scenes things, in Rune Terror things in general. Rune Terror is like the name of 
the entire land that the arcane universe is set in, the League of Legends universe. But the Black Rose, that is what is coming after Ambessa. That's what killed her son, Mel's brother, and it's followed Ambessa here. And it knows that Ambessa wants Hextech, but Ambessa already has Hextech, and without it, they might have been in some trouble here, Ambessa and her guard. But that's just one extra layer over everything. I didn't expect something like this to be involved. I thought it was going to be Hextech, Shimmer, which is probably going to be Chemtech, and then the Void. But they've just added this, oh, it's so interesting, comes up later and it takes Mel, which I imagine it wants to use as leverage against M Ambessa. But we're going to see more about that later. Like that's super interesting stuff to me. I, I really like it. And then Vi and Caitlin have their chat. And this scene in the moment, it was so good. It's what a lot of people wanted. It's what they were teasing throughout season one. Vi really coming from the perspective of, look, I want to do this. I want to get rid of Jinx. Like I'm with you on that. So Maddie, I believe the other two's names are Loris and Smeb. Loris is the big guy and Smeb is the, uh, the different colored dude. Vi's like, we got to let them go. It's just got to be the two of us because they know that just between the two of them, they can get it done and they probably would have gotten it done too. But Vi with some big lines, man, like saying everyone around her has changed. She doesn't want Caitlyn to change as well. And look, by the end of the episode, I mean, it speaks for itself, man, but they have a really nice moment and Caitlyn says she won't change. You're feeling pretty good about it, like going forward, but then because of what happens in the rest of the episode, it just leaves such a bad taste in your mouth. And then we really start to get a look of Ambessa's work behind the scenes. So she's just using Salo to get this massive audience of all the important people in Piltover. And she's really taken what Salo says about the Kiriman name and used that to her advantage going forward. All of this is for Ambessa's agenda. She doesn't give a shit about Piltover or Zorn. She's just doing this to get her hands on more Chemtech and to have the tools that she needs to defend herself and her family from the Black Rose. She's really talking about family. It's really interesting because you look at Ambessa through Mel's point of view in season one. So you're on Mel's side. Ambessa's cast Mel out. You're like, damn, that's not a very family thing to do. But now you start to see things a lot more through Ambessa's point of view. The Black Rose is coming after them. She still wants to protect her family. Maybe she cares about herself. We know now that Ambess is really desperate from Mel's conversation with her assistant. I can't remember her name, I'm sorry. And obviously we get even more on all of that at the end of the episode as well, when we see that I believe Ambessa has paid Rennie to be there at the funeral. So Ambessa can be the one to come in and like save the day. And at the same time, it's showing Piltover that Zorn, the Undercity, uh, you know, they're willing to do stuff like this. So it's working in Ambessa's favor for the end of this episode. Mel gets all of the information about the conversation between Ambessa and Salo from Lest, I believe their name is. Looks like a Vestayan. But Mel had a way to connect Salo, uh, I guess, to Shimmer with that little thing, that the tattoo brush, whatever you want to call it. I don't know how much that really matters at this point considering what Ambessa's done at the end of the episode. Salo's not the one in power. In fact, I don't know if Salo has any relevance at all anymore. I mean, we're going to find out. It's Caitlyn. And the fact that Mel got taken by the Black Rose. Like, that's crazy. Like, where? Like, like what does this even mean? I, I can't wait to see. Jace, Echo, and Dong are having some conversations about wild runes. And it seems like there is just this massive connection to Hextech and its use in general. It's not the people like Heimer was concerned about. It's Hextech itself, the arcane, leaving footprints and stuff. That's what Victor saw. That has to be why it led him to that specific place. I'm sure the arcane has its own agenda at this point. That, that's what I'm getting from this. But what they find and what they experience down, you know, where they found that big, you know, you know, hex thing that's to do with the gates. I forget what it's specifically called, but a big deal in itself that they put it underground because that's why it's affecting the tree like even though they're miles from the main fissures like Jay says it's still connected to the docks that eventually lead to that area so i'm glad they've like connected that dot as to why the tree was being affected but then what happens after that dude it screams void it's just like victor's hex core but why does it happen in that moment is it because it's in the presence of hex tech artifacts like jace's hammer that's the only thing i've got and then it affects what's going on in the big fight as well and don't even get me started 
on that fight. The imagery, the music, the amount of symbolism that's in there, it, it's just so much. And I'll just reiterate once again, I'm not one to really break down fights like this. I, I'm just one to uh, appreciate them in the moment, but there's a lot going on here, especially with the dialogue, a lot of visual symbolism as well. Even Vi just calling Jinx, Jinx. You know, finally got the name right. This is Vi accepting the fact that Powder is gone, Jinx killed her, and like Vi says, she doesn't want Jinx to taint Powder's memory anymore. And look, I'm kind of with Vi on that. Like, this is what I've been saying. It makes sense. Jinx has done some insane things. She needs to be dealt with, you know, one way or another. And once again, that's why you can kind of understand where Caitlyn's coming from too. And they mentioned Janna by name, which is really cool. I did uh, research Janna a little bit. Apparently in her lore, uh, she is worshipped uh, in Zorn uh, quite a fair bit and there's been a lot of attention paid to that but even in this area they're fighting there's a big mural with Janna on it in the back I'd love to see like Janna pull up at some point like that would be something crazy I don't think we will though and there's some really good back and forth dialogue between Vi and Jinx like really talking about how each other have changed but Vi is concluded only in her words once we get through uh, all of the epic fighting and the epic music all of these breakings uh, of these pillars with paintings of uh, powder and Vi on them you know, very symbolic of their relationship. I can only praise a, a lot of these visuals so much. Like, oh, dude. Contrasted very heavily with Jace, Donga, and Echo, you know, experiencing whatever they're experiencing. And Jace specifically, like, he touched the thing, man. We saw what's happened to Victor after he came in contact with his Hexcore. I don't even know what's going on here. Like, is there a direct connection between Hextech, the Arcane, and the Void? Like, that, that's what I'm starting to get. But once this is all going on uh, around Jace, it starts affecting the Hextech tech equipment of Vi and Caitlyn as well. And Kate and Savika's fight as well was really interesting. It's a little something extra like I didn't think we'd get. I really appreciated it. And Kate uh, came out on top. There was some uh, hex tech stuff going on there. I think Kate might have got a bit lucky. No disrespect to Caitlyn. But in a close range fight, uh, Savika should win that every time. And some really good imagery around Jace as well and flashing back to what he experienced when he was young, when he got saved by that arcane mage. But once we get down to it and the music goes out and we get into serious mode, Vi couldn't do it. She couldn't finish off Jinx the same way Echo couldn't in The Boy Savior. And this is where things get really juicy. So I'm really starting to think that Jinx set all of this up because she wanted to die. Stuff she was saying last episode, you know, like finish off what's left of her family. I really think she was talking about herself. Jinx really seemed like she was accepting her fate. Like she said, she was glad it was Vi. Like she wanted it to be Vi. It was all happening the way she wanted it to. And then this kid gets involved and throws a massive spanner in the works. This kid has really gotten attached to Jinx. But you see values start to come out here. The kid's pointing the gun at Vi's face. And first of all, you can see Jinx is really unsure if she wants this to happen first of all. There, there is no world where Vi is going to do anything to this kid. Caitlyn though, now knowing Caitlyn's character, I agree with her. She probably wasn't going to miss, but Vi's not even willing to take that risk. There are principles here. There is a kid in the way, a child that probably has absolutely no idea what is going on right now, who, who's just following Jinx, who they've become attached to. And Vi's like, no, we don't do that. Really sticking to her values, you can appreciate it. But Caitlyn is just blinded by th this rage and sadness around her mother, just wanting to get revenge. Revenge is always a, a terrible motivator in situations like this. But then Savika comes in and, and pulls the pin, if you will and all these explosions happen and all these colors are, are happening topside. But Jinx says, no, it, this isn't the way it was supposed to go. I think Zavika was potentially meant to do that after Jinx was taken out. I, I think Jinx wanted to be taken out and then this big explosion of, col of color, it, it was like Jinx's like last little thing, if you will. That, that's where my head goes with that, which is crazy. But now what is Jinx gonna do, you know? Like what is she gonna feel like she has to do now? This kid's just saved her life pretty much. She didn't want to be saved. I could be wrong about all of this, but but what that leads us to is Kate and Vi having a very significant disagreement. Caitlyn's gone right now. I, I don't know who's here. It's Princess freaking Commander Kiriman, man. But obviously, Caitlyn having the shot in season one and not taking it and eventually leading to the death of her mother 
is haunting her. She had a shot, Vi stopped her, and to Caitlyn, that's all it is. And then she physically hurt Vi, like that hurt, man. I'm sure it hurt Vi a, a lot more than <laughs> it did to us as viewers, because they had that super nice moment earlier in the episode, and now we're here. It's almost like Caitlyn's the one going rogue, man, not Jinx. But like I said, we got two more acts, we got six more episodes to go. Caitlyn's gonna have a crazy character arc. I'm sure this is all gonna come back to where it needs to. It's just how we get there, you know? Like, you can know where things are gonna end up, but Arcane is doing uh, one of the best jobs I've seen in recent memory of, of making it so you have literally no idea of how we're going to get there. And this final scene before the final tease of uh, Warwick was really interesting. I could see Ambessa calling Caitlyn's name out a mile away. The things that Ambessa was saying, what she was looking for in this leader, just the way Caitlyn's been this whole episode, this whole season, you know, it just made so much sense. It was never going to be freaking Salo. Who cares about this person? And in the back of my mind, I was waiting for Caitlyn to turn it down, but she is being given everything that she needs to do what she feels like she needs to do. And she is using all her resources. And it's really interesting because Ambessa is doing all of this for herself. Caitlyn might be accepting all of this for herself. They're all just using each other to get what they want. And who do we have left? Like we've got Vi. Now based on the trailer, I feel like Vi goes on a little bit of an arc, you know, she kind of goes off by herself potentially. So maybe that's what Vi goes and does to start the next arc. And then we've got Jace, Echo, and Donga. What have they just experienced? What, what does this mean for them? I keep thinking like, because of who we know Echo and Hyma to be and what they can do in League of Legends, do they get like knowledge from this? Do they become smarter? What happens to Jace and Victor as well? Like what's going on with Victor? And then there's this Black Rose stuff. Like I, I really, I don't have a lot. And here's the thing with Arcane. I don't feel the need to want to predict things or have expectations because it's such a good show to just experience for what it is. But Caitlyn right now, she is like the, what the military leader of Piltover. She has Noxian forces in her commander. I didn't see this for Caitlyn. Like sweet, innocent Caitlyn from season one and now look at her. Let him cook, man. And then one last final tease of Warwick before the next act. When's the big reveal, you know? How much is this gonna shake things up? Maybe this is what connects Vi and Jinx back together. I don't know, bro. Maybe that doesn't even happen. And it's like Singed was uh, giving his blood to Warwick. We gonna see, because like I've been saying, if you're a lead character in my head, you, you kind of have plot armor. But I, but I really don't know, man. I really don't know. I'm so excited to see what happens, man. Like this arcane hextech void stuff that the Black Rose, all the fantasy stuff, like, like Ah, oh, dude, dude, I can't wait. I'm really tossing up in my mind about how to do these discussions going forward because there's lots of jumping back and forth between things if you're going chronologically through the episode. But if you try and talk about just one thing the whole way through, they all connect with each other like, like so much, you know? So I hope I'm not missing anything, but I feel really good about that. There's so much hidden in here, so much character stuff, symbolism, like it's just all laid out so well and I'm just trying to appreciate it as much as I can. We got some of the best cinema to come. You know what I'm saying? Some of the best arcane ever is about to come. It's going to be so good. So thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And as always, please continue to leave your comments and feedback down below. You know, I always appreciate it. We'll see you all in the next episode of Arcane.